In this video, what I want to talk about is the applications for Boyle's Law and why it is so very important in pneumatics so you can understand flow in the system. So here, what I have, one five gallon tank filled up to 100 PSI, okay? And then I have an identical tank, another five gallon tank here, which is at the pressure of zero, okay? And I have a 2-2 valve, right here, set in place, and when I open it up, I am going to double the volume of this tank when I do this to see what happens to the pressure. So we should be getting roughly about 43 PSI, roughly around 43 PSI in an ideal circuit. And this is gonna be far from ideal, but it should work to help us uh, demonstrate why this is so important. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up this and you're gonna see the pressure over here drop because the volume has gotten bigger. The pressure over here is gonna go up because this is the new, the, the size of the container has changed. And I have a couple of different pressure gauges. Okay, so now this won't come out to be ideal. It's not gonna be perfect because there are factors in here such as resistance uh, to airflow, uh, age of some of the gauges and the quality of them, but it will give you a very clear idea of how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the 2-2 valve right here and you're gonna hear the air start to flow. So you can see here, pressure is dropping over here it's going up over here. But by Boyle's law, even though we're doubling the size of the container, we're not losing exactly half of the pressure from this one, okay? It's a non-linear comparison, not a linear comparison, if you were to graph it over time, okay? So now, a lot happens right at the beginning, and then it just starts to slow down over time. Now, if I left this here overnight and there were no leaks or anything like that, eventually these would become a little closer to equal. But right now, our original tank holds a little more, and our secondary tank has a little bit less. Not much, maybe about five, five to 10 PSI difference. The longer it sits here, the more it'll even out. These tubes are not very big, so, uh, the, the decompression of this won't be complete and it's harder for the air from here to get over here because there's less of a pressure differential. We had so much flow going at the beginning because of that pressure differential. All right? And so now let's take a look at this in a pneumatic circuit so we can understand why this decompression of air following Boyle's law is so critical for uh, pneumatic systems out there. So let's look at Boyle's Law and identify what we just did with the tanks and show the math behind that. Because this would rep the math here would represent this in an ideal circuit, which these, cheap, these tanks and uh, the hoses and the way that I have it hooked up is by far an ideal situation. So there will be some pressure, there will be some differences there. Okay? So let's take a look at this. So what our volume says is, the amount of pressure we have in our volume at one moment in time, in our situation in time. So I have here uh, five gallons, okay? And my pressure was at 100 PSI. When I change one of these variables, how will it affect the other, okay? So in this case, what we have is my volume that I'm changing. So I'm gonna be looking or trying to predict what my newest pressure would be. Okay, so what I would have to do is a little math magic. I would have to uh, bring the uh, pressure in the second situation by itself. So I would divide V2 out on both sides, and then these would cancel themselves out and would leave me with this formula here. So pressure in my second situation is pressure in my first situation times my volume divided by my volume two. Now, before I can uh, start putting this onto a formula, I have to convert a couple of things. First, we have um, first we have five gallons, okay? And so five gallons is a ratio of, uh, is a value of capacitance, not a volume. So I want to go ahead and multiply that by two thirty one, and that is going to give me a hundred one thousand one hundred and fifty five cubic inches. Then I can start to place this in to these values and I would just have to double this 
or make for my second situation 10 gallons, all right, times 231, and I would get 231, 2,310 cubic inches. So I want to start to place these values in here, but I have to take my pressure to an absolute value here. And since we're using PSI and not bars or kilopascals, I'm going to have 100 PSI plus 14.7. And this will give me 114.7 PSI A. And that's an absolute value that I need to use in Boyle's Law. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll start placing these values in here. So this would be to predict what my pressure will be. So I'll have 114.7 times 1,000 55, 11, I'm sorry, 1,155 over 2,310. You can run that through your calculators and you are going to get 57.35 PSI A. But you're saying, wait, we didn't get 2,000, we didn't get 500, five. you're saying we didn't get 57.35, we got less than that, we were in our 40s. Well, what we have to do here is come and subtract 14.7 from that to bring it back to just gauged pressure, okay? So then our answer is going to come out to be 42.65 PSI, roughly. We could round this off to 43. And we saw that in here, that we were in our 40s, give or take. Again, one of our tanks had higher pressure still because of the force required, because it gets so much harder for air to expand once the uh, balance changes, that it would take a really long time for these to finally balance them out if they ever do. But this is the math that can help us predict what is going to happen in these containers. All right, And it should give us a rough estimate, okay, because this is an ideal situation, this is not. So why is Boyle's Law important? Now, first of all, when we're dealing with Boyle's Law, we are making one big assumption, that temperature is not changing. There's a combination law that can help to factor in and add temperature into it. But I just want to give you guys an idea of why Boyle's Law is so important for pneumatics. In this circuit, what I have is a 5-2 directional control valve controlling a double-acting cylinder. And I want to talk about Boyle's Law and why this idea of air expanding when we change volume is so very important. So right here is my generic symbol for my, pow my pneumatic power. So this would be coming from a power unit somewhere or a manifold. All right? Then I got my examples for my exhausts here. And I'm running up to here at my cylinders back. Now, right now, if there's no air flowing in this circuit. So my pressure, okay, if I wanted to bring my pressure gauge, add a pressure gauge in right here, is holding steady, all right? It is exactly where it needs to be. Let's say it's whatever my pressure um, regulator set at, let's say 80 PSI, all right? Now, as soon as I activate this solenoid, this is going to shift over. And just like when I opened up that 2-2 valve, the volume of this unit expands. So pressure is going to drop. So what's gonna happen is, Air is going to flow in here, and as it pushes this out, the container is going to get bigger. My volume is going to get bigger. So my pressure here is going to drop a little bit. And this is going to expand out until it gets all the way expanded. Then my pressure is going to regulate. All right? It'll go back up to 80 PSI. Because now the volume is not changing, pressure can get caught up. I have much more power over here than I could ever wear out in this situation. So then I let my solenoid, I deactivate my solenoid. This shifts over. Oh no, volume changes again. This is going to start to retract. And when that happens, my pressure is going to go down until this gets all the way back up. And then my pressure is going to regulate again. Bear in mind that every time I shift the spool in my directional control valve, my volume is changing because my air can now decompress and the force of that decompression is greater than the force it would take to maintain this thing in this position. All right? And so this idea of Boyle's Law and how that air expands 
It's really important to understand and make that relationship. It's the decompression of this gas that actually creates the movement in this pneumatic cylinder. Okay? So that's just an application for Boyle's Law. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, uh, or if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and hope you enjoyed it.